I got a call from the BBC. Well, I didn't actually get a call from the BBC. got an email. They invited me to a meeting. They wanted to keep track on what I was doing. I think they'd seen the last video. Yay! Yay! Have a good smell of the ink. It is to die for. It's... They weren't too impressed. Attended the meeting. Very excited to go into Broadcasting House because obviously love the BBC. Got uh, ushered into a room where five other people from the BBC were all sat around. One with a notebook, some people dressed reasonably smartly, others less so. I had to explain to them what I was doing. I got terribly, terribly excited about the forthcoming season. And uh, they kind of liked that, they did kind of like that. And then I explained the people who I wanted to talk to, like Peter Duncan. Uh, but did get very excited about Peter Duncan and tried to explain to them why. The thing about Peter Duncan is that he used to present Blue Peter. Well, Mike has not only got the recording studio time when I watched Blue Peter and I thought he was very good. The engineer, he plays all the instruments. And so I was very excited about the prospect of possibly meeting him and said it would be nice to meet him and interview him maybe in a little sort of video thing. Um, naturally they were sort of interested to find out why it was that I was so excited and went some way to explain that the last time I'd seen him was not on television uh, but in Ikea. <laughs> when I went to go and buy some furniture. And uh, in the process of buying some furniture, I realized that he was there too. And uh, as a result, my furniture buying trip was, was rescheduled so that I could go off and follow him. I wanted to find out what he was buying. And uh, when I found out what he was buying for his children, it was a desk, um, I then wanted to find out how he was going to buy it, whether he was going to use a credit card or a debit card. I'm not nosy, it's not like I'm nosy, it's just that I'd like to know. Uh, so I followed him all the way around the store and then get caught up, got caught up in a huge, huge queue. He was in another queue, I never found out, I never found out how he purchased it. But when I saw that he was in the proms season, I thought well, maybe it would be a good opportunity to find out, A, whether he still got the desk, uh, how he purchased it, if he can actually remember the event. Got terribly excited explaining all of that to them. The marketing manager, lovely, lovely lady who would got a big notebook on her, on her desk, just went, do you not have an access to the artists? It's a bit of a shame, really. There was a great deal of laughing done by other people. I wasn't entirely clear whether they were laughing at me or with me, but at least they were laughing, I thought. They suggested, well, why don't you do a proms walk? Why don't you go on a proms walk around London and uh, see some of the places that are sort of linked to proms history? The marketing manager gave me a bit of a taster session. They suggested that I might be interested in seeing the site of the original Queen's Hall. Queen's Hall was built and opened in 1893, 27th of November 1893, in fact. Prompt first at the Queen's Hall in 1895. I haven't memorised these. These are on a bit of paper. It's not a great deal to tell you about the Queen's Hall. Lots of people thought it was a great place, had fantastic acoustics. I believe it might possibly have held up to 2,700 people. Interesting, isn't it? Very, very excited about that because I do like my history. I like seeing architecture. Uh, so they gave me a little map. I think, I think it's down here. They gave me an illustration of what I might find when I get there, which was terribly helpful. Often, terribly helpful for the BBC. This is it. This is where it is. This is where it is. This is great. So exciting. Right, so no, stop, stop. It's right here. There's just nothing to it. It's just a wall. It's just a wall. I mean, really. In 1940, there was a bomb dropped on the Queen's Hall. There was another one dropped in March time of 1941. The big bomb dropped on the night of the 10th of May 1941. It was that that set the building ablaze and basically raised it to the ground, which is why all that's left at the site of the Queen's Hall is this. It's not very nice, is it? I mean, really. I mean, in all seriousness, what a letdown. I think somebody's having a little joke at my expense, don't you?